What is up, everybody? This is Rocktavia Rose with Rock News UK. And tonight I am chatting with Primal Moon. I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to you to introduce yourself to your international audience right now and tell us a little bit about your band. All right. Well, I'm Joe, uh, Joe Brunker. I'm the lead singer of Primal Moon. Uh, Tony Tassari is the drummer. Uh, Brian Alberts is the guitarist. Guitarist and Luke Hope is the bass. Uh, we're just a simple three-piece band with four people. Uh, and we've been having a lot of fun over the last three years. Uh, started, won a couple competitions, got our first recording, which was Broke Man, and then slowly have been progressing in our sound and our, our show and performance abilities. So it's been an awesome time lately. Uh, uh, people are really starting to like us. Uh, I, I do a lot of guerrilla marketing so that uh, so that people can definitely see us regardless. Even if they don't listen to rock, they're going to check us out based on the way that I do. Fantastic. Yeah, I've actually <laughs> I've actually been listening to the EP all day and I dig it um, legitimately like, OK, I jumped on Spotify. I'm like. Um, let me let me see what this is all about. And uh, the first song popped on, and I was like, oh, "Okay." And then like <laughs> you, you get through like the chorus and everything. I'm like, and then the vocals come on. You come on, and I was like, "Whoo!" <laughs> I literally said that out loud. <laughs> I'm like, they are they are really really good. Like I love the. EP. Yeah, I have no other marketable talent, so I mean, <laughs> the, the other guys, they know how to play instruments. We were practicing yesterday, and I swear, they tried to get me to play things, and I was like, I, I can't, I cannot compute, you know, <laughs> like, but, but writing melodies. System error does not compute. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into the roots of everything. Um, I am here in the Chicagoland area and I have made it a point to try to get to know some local bands. So um, go ahead and give us the background on Primal Moon. Well, uh, the four of us have all kind of been in projects with one another. Uh, Tony and Brian have been playing for over a decade together and Luke's been playing with them for about eight years. I've been in the music scene for about eight years. I was with another band called Over the Sun, which a lot of people laugh at the sun and moon thing. But uh, <laughs> I love the sun and moon thing, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I but I also met Luke in Dead Harvest. Uh, Brian, Luke, and Tony have been in like three or four bands together. So they've got a very tight sound. Uh, Brian and Tony have been in every single band with each other. Uh, and that is why we actually play Johnny Be Good at every show we play because they've been playing that since that was the first song they ever played together. So uh, I was literally going to ask you, one of my questions was, what is your favorite cover? And you totally beat me to it. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Punch. <laughs> All right, so how did you like take us back to the beginning? What was your inspiration <laughs> of like- What was inspiration? Yeah, for musically, like what what started it all for you? Uh, Well, when I was younger, I had grown up listening to all the oldies music. I, I was, my parents raised me on oldies 104.3, which oh, yeah. was uh, Yeah, it would be my- <laughs> And I got, I got to be on the radio once and do the weather for him because he visited Jewel. And then the next year he had me on the radio as well when I visited Jewel and he was there again. So I kind of just started to fall more in love with it. And I started to see, wow, I, I can kind of hold a tune. Um, maybe I'll try it out. So I started to uh, do talent shows in fourth grade. I was uh, a Beatle for the first year. And awesome. And my third year, and uh, then like in sixth grade, I decided to uh, try out for a talent agency, which I got into. 
and um, started uh, auditioning for movies and uh, talking to labels. A lot of the labels wanted me to recreate oldies music as a kid. And honestly, I thought that would be pretty tacky. Uh, but my parents, my parents could not uh, afford the move because they wanted us to move to either New York City or Dallas. And it was just kind of uh, outlandish because we would have had to spend a lot of extra money. Right. So I continued in the arts and through high school and uh, but then got really heavily addicted to a lot of drugs and um, a lot of crime at the time. And uh, my life definitely uh, spiraled towards something where I started writing songs when I ended up in rehab, which was a, a faith-based rehabilitation program for a year. I became the worship leader there and um, wrote about 20 songs in my first year. But uh, the other, the guys have been playing for years, and I know Luke would tell you it's uh, a Beatles song that uh, definitely inspired him to start wanting to play music. And uh, Kiss was also uh, one of his big uh, desires, and like he wanted to be awesome. at the time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, they they've all been we've all been heavily influenced by blues rock, even though they know the songs better because. Honestly, I just love writing songs. So learning songs fully by lyrics, it's more of a task for me than writing songs. <laughs> yeah, that's that's quite a journey. That's really cool. <laughs> it's definitely been. Uh, yeah, my old band was more like it started off Christian reggae and then it ended up alternative rock. And then now these past two bands, Dead Harvest and uh, Primal Moon, have have more of a, a set rock and roll theme to it uh, with with a heavy blues backing, but a little bit of grunge and a little bit of funk and a little bit of oh. acoustic all over the place. Yeah, that's awesome. Like I, uh, I also failed to mention like, like I feel like everything involving like worship in the church and all that stuff, it looks like you have some company. <laughs> Just some business peeps. It's still at work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I basically just went to the bottom floor of this building. Uh, I, it's my first time down here. It's pretty cool. The wall is like a lava lamp, so that's pretty neat. Oh, what? Can you yeah, show I know. that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wonder if it translates. It's right over there. Weird. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> I know. <It's> neat. <laughs> Well, what I was gonna say, what I was gonna say is, I think it's pretty cool how um, you mentioned with your rehab, everything was worship based for you, and I think it's amazing how when things that kind of coincide with the church, like my, a lot of my inspiration for, I was raised heavily in the church, and I bounced back and forth between like <sighs> Lutheran, Baptist, and a lot of Catholic, and apostolic even and when I went to church oh. uh, yeah when I went to church there it was heavily music based and it, it was super uplifting like and music had a huge influence on the churches that I went to so um I was one of those kids that was in church like on Wednesday and then you know you had like CCD and then you know Sunday school and yeah, my parents went through the Catholic realm as kids. I, I definitely know of that. Yeah. <laughs> and I even went but to Catholic did, school for not. a while there too. Like the during right, like kind of like right off of that, like Britney Spears era. So like the high knee socks and the skirts and the like pigtails and stuff like that. And I remember coming, I had to transfer to public school and I didn't have any clothes. So like I had to wear my Catholic school uniform to public school and all the guys were like, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any any girl that like that's usually a lot of guys things with girls in uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I think that's the same thing for anyone in uniform. I, I think it translates. <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah. True. Anyway, True. off topic. <laughs> 
I was going to comment on how lovely we both look tonight. We're very dapper currently, the two of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just started my new job today, so uh, I thought I'd dapper up with a three-piece, and then I found out nobody wears three-pieces here, so, I mean, at least I know that now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, first impressions are the best impressions, so you made a pretty good one today, right? <laughs> Better to overdo it, right? There you go. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being a little extra. <laughs> Normal's boring anyway. Um, so I have to ask you, um, who are you? Luke said he's able to join in 10 minutes. He said he's so gonna? Cool. He, awesome. If, if he can log into the email and stuff. So yeah. I, I'm, tell him I to right, tell him right in. That's fine. All um, right. Hopefully he's dapper too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. He probably just got out of, he, he just got out of work. He's a pipe fitter, so not sure. Not sure if it's, it's uh too, but you know, I think you'll look all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna ask you, um, who are your major musical heroes? Like who really, is there anyone who was like, man, they're singing, I really gotta get in this. I gotta try to like start, you know, getting my chops up being a singer. I really like uh, Chadwick Stokes from Dispatch and State Radio. Um, He's one of my favorites, just for the fact that he's uh, he's got a great message usually, and he's uh, he protests in the best way, you know. And it's really it's really cool to see. Uh, I like Caleb Followell from Kings of Leon. Yeah. Uh, he's he's uh, vocally he he was kind of a major inspiration for me because I like uh, singing harder, and, and uh, you know I, I like to I like to add a little rasp. I like to feel the emotion of it and I feel the emotion in his voice Trevor Hall uh, he's a solo artist uh, really great I've always loved him and his story is pretty interesting I didn't know he was like a monk for a while which is really cool yeah and uh, uh, John Lennon I would also definitely put up there uh, John Lennon's been one of the people that I followed and he the second time I went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame you know, I went to the John Lennon exhibit Although he, his uh, history may be colorful in a sense, uh, I, I think he I think he was truly trying to spread a cool message. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I feel like a lot of the people that I interview, like I don't want to sound cliche or anything, but I feel like it's kind of a given that the Beatles kind of have a hand in every musician's life in one way or another. Yeah, and, and people who deny it, I mean, that's cool, whatever. People who <laughs> want to hate Beatles, whatever. They're still the most famous band to ever walk the planet. So it doesn't really matter what they say because haters are going to hate from no matter if you're a small band or a big band. Yeah. So <laughs> um, can you enlighten us on what has been your most like influential memory with the band so far? Do you have any big ones out there yet? Uh, I would say, wait, what's it? Okay, okay, cool. I just <laughs> went to look, okay, cool. All right, Um, I would say uh, one of the moments that really struck me in music was Probably when we got to play Disney World with my old band, uh, that was just such an experience, and it just kind of showed me that, like, you know what? Hey, I'm good enough. You know, I'm I, my music is good enough to be heard, and I want people to hear it. And uh, you know, the more and more, regardless of what people say, they make it for them. That, yeah, I make it for me, but I also make it for people to hear and relate. You know, uh, and even if not everybody does, like, that's their preference. But, uh, and then with Primal Moon, it's definitely been just the grassroots growth that we've been able to see over the last year since I started Guerrilla Marketing. And you see all the support that has come out of everywhere, every mm -hmm. fold. <laughs> Tell us more about that. Tell us more about your independent marketing journey. What, what are you up to? 
Um, well, I, I sign wave on street corners all around uh, the suburbs and Chicago. Uh, just basically telling people to listen to Primal Moon. And uh, so people have started listening and started liking us, which has opened the doors to podcasts and many different interviews of sorts. Um, because people are intrigued. It just draws the eye in some way that is not normal anymore. It, stuff like that used to be more normal. Uh, I go door to door. I pass out flyers uh, for shows. Um, I, I talk to the people at their door, like uh, say, hey, check out my band. I think you might like us. And uh, I do a lot of cheesy videos, reels uh, that are like really goofy, but they just shock people into thinking about us you know like what the heck are they up to and uh it's it's started to work uh people are starting to look and listen and it's 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 been a beautiful thing uh we've been getting more show offers and we have a steadier consistency at our shows of people who show up so that's been there's been a lot of cool things we've risen 300 in on Instagram followers, uh, another 2,000 on Facebook followers. It's just, it's been pretty crazy, <laughs> but it's been a cool year. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the venues that you're playing in the city when you play live. We haven't played as much in the city lately. Uh, due to COVID stuff, but uh, we, are, we are definitely playing all over the place. Uh, and, and for rock, honestly, a lot of the venues in the outskirts are like the Forge or Rock House in the suburbs are, are places that are perfect for our genre. Uh, in the city, it's a little bit more of a, a screamo or a, like metal, like a different type of metal or, or uh, pop punk is or alternative it's a but you still get those shows every now and then we play we played elbow room uh rest in peace love elbow room it's practically down the street for me that's one of my favorites okay. yeah it was a great one uh and i've been i've been uh, able to play bottom lounge house of blues bottom line this is a good time too <laughs> yeah uh i love bottom lounge i think yeah. i think Bottom Lounge better than House of Blues. Don't tell House of Blues. Oh, come on, man. House of Blues is awesome. Those are great people. <laughs> yeah. Getting up that staircase to go to the green room is great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, if you had a dream venue to play, which one would you jump into? Like if somebody's like, wherever you want to play, we're gonna we're gonna book you. Dang. Uh, <laughs> anywhere? Anywhere. Or, you yeah. can pick anywhere. You don't have to pick Chicago. You can pick anywhere. I think Radio City Hall would be pretty cool. Uh, but Chicago, honestly, I think our sound is is a louder stadium rock sound. And I would love to play Guaranteed Rate Field because yeah. I'm a huge shot. And uh, either, well, Soldier Field, but not anymore. There you <laughs> well, go. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, like I don't know. I feel like venues have like kind of, especially the independent venues. Um, they kind of have like a huge impact on like fans and their progress, like on their come up. Um, I think you guys would be a fun band for the Metro. I think the Metro would be awesome, truly. Like, honestly, like the Metro is actually like a venue that's always been on my list just for the fact that my cousin used to be in a band and he, he was part of what inspired me uh, to keep making music. Uh, just the fact that he was able to open for Fall Out Boy and to a sold out crowd at the Metro. Just, uh, I, I always remember that story. Okay, so Fall Out Boy is one of my most absolute favorite Chicagoland success stories. Um, mm -hmm. Were you at Wrigley at all? No, unfortunately. That was my. That was a my wonderful moment. Oh, <laughs> my old job was horrible. <laughs> like, so um, like, I'm by. It was it was just uh, the scheduling was really hard for all of us. 
Uh, so I'm glad that we we overcame that, you know, and uh, yeah. I got a job that is more flexible and yeah. uh, that I'm more able to go to practice and play weeknight shows, which feels a lot better. Yeah. But we, my weekends were pretty locked too, so I never made it out to the Fall Out Boy show. Oh, it was, it was, that sucks. Like I got mine, like I got my stuff before like the world fell apart. So <laughs> I was ready for that show. Um, yeah, well, I got it before everything fell apart and it was just, whoo, oh, like I, there were shivers like and tingles and all of the above like seeing them play in Wrigley and like them like their production is insane like I oh. loved it I loved everything about it and like having Weezer there too and like Green Day and oh oh yeah Weezer and Green <laughs> I love Weezer I don't know I love the older Weezer but like I love all the Weezer just because Rivers Cuomo literally left Harvard in his last yeah. semester to drop Buddy Holly. And like literally is now $23 million of net worth just because he followed his dreams. And that's yeah. encouraging. Yes. 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 <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Yeah. There you All go. right. What up? What's up? Nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us, Luke. Better late than never. Yeah, I'm the bassist. I'm always late. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm the one who's always late. What are you talking about? <laughs> it, it, at practice, but it's a stereotype. Though. <laughs> All right. So what we were just we were just talking about like our musical passions. Um, if you want to give us a bit of a background, um, Luke, on what kind of inspired you to pick up your bass and your musical heroes, if you will, since you're joining us, we'd love to know. Um, so, all right, so it all started for me when I was about like 10, I'd say for Kiss, the band Kiss. I was really into Dean Simmons and I really wanted to spitfire and, <laughs> and just have like a long tongue. So I, I actually dressed up as Gene Simmons for Halloween when I was like 11. <laughs> Um, but actually, it goes back to when I was about like two, listening to the Beatles. My dad got me listening to the Beatles. So that's where I started there. And then my musical influences are, I'd have to go with Cream, like Jack Bruce. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's my uh, top one for uh, bass. And then I'd have to go with Barry Oakley. From the Almond Brothers. Fantastic. Yeah. So if you could play any dream venue, oh. what venue would you play? Like anywhere. It doesn't matter. Phil Maurice. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's closed down. It's been closed down, but that's my place that I'd pick. So we'll reopen it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, uh, I think so many awesome bands have played there in, in history. I just think that's so cool. Like the Almond Brothers, Santana's played there. Yeah, I love Santana. I love Santana. Santana. I've seen Santana twice. I've seen him with Joe actually. With yeah. the Doobie Brothers. Oh yeah. 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 yeah nice. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have fantastic taste in music. I just want to put that out there. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Where were we? Oh, we were talking about how <clears throat> we were talking about Rivers Cuomo and we were talking <laughs> about how um, it's really great to see musicians kind of stick to their guns and like maybe go outside of the box and like do things that, you know, they care about, that they put their heart in, that they're really passionate about instead of like, you know, sticking to the grain and like being like cookie cutter. You know, they're doing original stuff. Um, what inspires you the most to be an individual? Either one of you can answer. I would love answers from both of you. What inspires my, my what? I'm sorry. What inspires you the most <laughs> to be a musical individual? Like individuality? Oh, my feelings, my emotions. I just like, I take it all out when I play. That's, that's what inspires me to to play just i don't know anything i feel <laughs> that's a good answer what about you joe 
I've just always thought that for some reason I'm supposed to do this. And if I don't make it, it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's that too. I, I would never, it's been a messy, sad, angering, happy, joyful experience all combined into one. And it's one of the most beautiful things. And I would never treat that. You know what? Sometimes I love the stuff that that's that's raw and and messy and you know when it doesn't always fall into place right away because like you know what I figure this is this is one of the things like ever since I was a little girl coming up like anything that's worth having doesn't come easily like true you put your you put your heart and soul and you put your you got to put work into it. Like if it, if it just, if it's super easy and it's just like, you know, almost on the brink of trying too hard, it just, it's just always like, eh, there. Not as much like, back, you right. don't gain as much action. Right. Like. Slow burn, still burn. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with, with the grind, the drive and working hard. And, and just because it doesn't, immediately come to fruition doesn't mean that it's not going to like if you keep at it and you don't give up and you really show like the realness and and your true passion and your it's truly where your heart lies and you stick to it and you stay stay with it and you stay true to it like it's it's gonna happen it is. right you gotta want it yeah <laughs> that's what i say that's like my, one of my mottos you gotta want it's it. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Oh my god! Woo! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you're a fan of ACDC then? Who are they? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I enjoy ACDC. Okay. Now, okay, now, okay. now, now these guys know all the lyrics to all the songs of all the bands <laughs> of all the past. I know the songs, but I don't know all the lyrics, but I still love them. <laughs> okay, so like another big influence is the School of Rock with Jack Black. Um, um yeah. yes, Jack Black. Yeah. I can't yeah. tell you how many music musicians I've talked to. I don't know, that movie strikes a chord in all of us. Not just because we had like a hometown kid in that movie, Rest His Soul. I'm so sad that he's not with us anymore. Very sad. Yeah, he was um, a great. Yeah, he really, really was. Um, whew, sorry, um, <laughs> but like that, was that, that day. Yeah, it was. It really was. It was. Like it's not too far from where I live currently either. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But um. I gotta let you know my phone may die in about 10, 15 minutes. But no! Luke. Will <laughs> the night of like technical issues. Okay. I tried to charge, but I'm glad we got to talk. <laughs> like, dude, that's the singer stereotype. His phone always dies. <laughs> Your phones are always dying. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs> like, every single um, time I see Joe, hey, my phone's about to die. Uh, can I use your phone? Can we use your phone? <laughs> hey, I'm a, can we record your phone off of your phone? Just practice. <laughs> But no, no, School of Rock, like every musician that I talk to, like he, it's almost like everybody gets like a simultaneous single when you mention that movie. I don't think, I don't know, I'm sure he does. I don't know if Jack Black knows how big of an influence he had on so many generations with that movie. Like it's so important. And Tenacious D pick a destiny. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I gotta I gotta like rapid fire all these questions out because you know of course the lead singer's phone is dying and you gotta make sure. <laughs> um, so how did you guys come up with your band name? Um, one time I was <laughs> on acid and <laughs> <laughs> I was at a concert, a Smashing Pumpkins concert, <laughs> and I looked over to Tony like, "Hey, the moon is moon is telling me something, all right? Like, hey, it's gonna be in our band name." And we kept trying to change our band name for months because it used to be Blue Vision, but that's also the name of like some company and some rapper. So we were like, uh, you know, let's uh, let's uh, move away from Blue Vision. 
and uh, try to figure this out. So we all sat down and we started throwing out words that seemed to go well. And With Moon, yeah. With Moon, Girl, yeah. Um, wasn't Feral Moon one of them? Feral Moon. And then, uh, and then we went to Primal based on like going back to like the primitive ages of rock and roll rather than... Yeah, there was Primitive Moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. Primal Moon. It's a really good name. I could see that name like going going places, going far. Like it, it's something that, you know, you could pick up on. Um, I'd go see that, you know? Even if I didn't know what the sound was, I'm like, that sounds kind of cool. They're opening for who? Yeah, that's cool. Whatever, I'll go see it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've we've definitely been blessed to open for some really cool bands uh, lately uh, in the past year, and that's that's definitely been an awesome time. <laughs> Tell us, uh, Joyous Wolf, uh, Smells Like Nirvana, Dead Original, um, Cold Stairs, Cold Stairs, yeah, uh, lots of they just toured with Larkin Poe. I love Larkin Poe, and uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> All that southern bluesy stuff, like it, it that's so Warms up. yeah. Like I love that sound. Like I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. It just it strikes a chord. It really does. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I give total thanks to Robert Johnson for thinking it's such a huge thing. <laughs> like, or And all the Mississippi Delta blues artists and all the Chicago blues artists that have yeah. really been an influence on us and yeah. all of them. Really what it is, like we really are based off of blues bass, really. It is, like, it is some powerful stuff. Like, I can't believe you guys aren't bigger. Like that was the other thought that ran through my head when I, after I, I heard Joe's voice come in, I was like, woo. I'm like, damn, this is good. <laughs> and then we I was can't like, believe why, it why either. are they <laughs> bigger? <laughs> the thing is, is that we can't believe it either. <laughs> the band is freaking the hell out and, 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 and you're modest. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> all right, I have to ask you, like, what, is there any specific kind of, message that you're trying to get across in your music like what are you trying to like if i was coming to a show and i had no idea what to expect what should i expect a really rocking good time with a lot yeah, of yeah rock show messages. i mean yeah we just we rock <laughs> we, we're, basically basically it's our life unfolding and every emotion that i'm feeling we we freestyle most of our songs not all of them but yeah, most of them are, of are created through the freestyle process all of our songs are pretty structured, pretty good, but we all we like to improv a lot. I base my lyrics on what I'm feeling right in that moment, so. I like we, the way you improv. It kind of has like a jazz feel, like if you're if you're in the moment more. Like that's really cool. Like that's like real blues and real jazz. Like that that's how you tell you can tell you guys have a, a solid foundation if you can just you know pick up and like just go off the cuff with it and you got something, you know, tasty, you got something slick out there on right. stage right in the moment. That's, hmm, I have to go see you guys live. Um, it's hella fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun. Um, so I have to ask you um, on a kind of more relaxed note, what's your most favorite thing to do for fun? Like when you guys wind down, like what humanizes you? I'm watching Game of Thrones. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like going on adventures. You know, uh, whether I like disc city. golf. I like that. That's what I like to do. Disc golf's a lot of fun. That's a great disc golf. Like, I yeah. love disc golfing. Oh, we gotta go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Disc golf. <laughs> Have you seen Game of Thrones start to finish yet? Luke? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I was about to say, don't watch the last season. <laughs> uh, I, I've watched, yes, I've watched all of it. I'm rewatching it just because I, I don't know. I can't. I have to have some kind of closure because I, <laughs> I know it. It's like the worst. Thing. So bad. <laughs> I need some kind of closure because I, I can't figure it out. <laughs> like what just happened? <laughs> oh god. Oh, bringing back flashbacks. But, 
I love the show though. It's such a good show. Yes, it was one of my most favorite things ever in the yeah. world. But, and I'm excited for the spinoff coming out too. Yeah, yeah. That that it looks good. Hopefully, yep. uh, the drag. hopefully it is good. I, <laughs> I just finished Vampire Diaries. <laughs> And now I'm on the originals. <laughs> yeah, vampires is old news. It's fine with me. Vampires like are okay. Excuse me. Vampires are never old news. No. Vamp- vampires, like, <laughs> they can't grow right. old. Just- <laughs> <laughs> That's like true blood. Okay. <laughs> true. True blood. True blood in the twilight. That was all like around the same time, wasn't it? You ever seen True Crip? It's pretty good. What? What? Just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, no, I haven't. All right, let me reel this back in. We're getting off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> it happens a lot with me and Joe. <laughs> All right. So... We both have ADHD, so if you can't tell. Oops. <laughs> um. Okay. So, can you guys like to get back on the more serious note? Can you guys tell us about the EP that you just released? Um, and what that writing process was like. How much time do we got on your phone, Joe, by the way? All right, I got, like, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> you, got, you guys, I got 1%. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All, All right, right so let's so, talk about the EP real quick before you go. <laughs> All right, so so the writing process, uh, Fight Me, was actually written with Dead Harvest uh, with Luke. Luke was in that band with me. Uh, we broke up. Uh, that, that band shot up really quick and went down really quick. Quick. It went down in flames, but it was great because then it spawned off and we started Primal Moon. They asked me to try out. I tried out first practice. We all fit like a glove. And uh, so this next EP, the second EP was just trying to uh, encompass a lot of different versions of our sound. And we, we thought we did that pretty well with uh, just going off a little bit from what we normally do, uh, which if, from our first EP was more hard rock, you know, and we, we kind of just slowly took people on a different path and it felt really cool to take them on an emotional journey. I really yeah. hope you guys end up blowing up because like from what I heard, I liked I liked everything I heard. So <laughs> I Thank enjoyed so the EP. Much. I listened to it from start to finish, so. <laughs> awesome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. I don't normally do that, but I did. Um, that was one of the ones. So I really hope you guys blow up. It's good stuff. And I hope I get to see you live soon. So like, since we're losing- I hope it's like we don't get fatter, you know, like that's-, that's <laughs> Get comfortable, get a little bit. We... Oh, we lost him. <laughs> oh, there it is. He's gone. What I was he gonna gone. Ask, the final <laughs> question, he, we lost him before I, I, I'm literally on the final question. But um, I was gonna ask, what is your baddest full moon behavior and or habit? Naughtiest full moon behavior and or habit. Oh boy. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so the full moon is like, you know, the freaks come out at night. Like the full moon inspires a lot more crazy behavior. I know my mom told me that all the time. And I, just, I don't even know what it, like she means by it though. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, I know it's the full moon. People are crazy. People are crazy all the time. <laughs> But, um, so what's my full moon habit? Your baddest full moon behavior. Like what, what's, what's your, what's your like, you know, every once in a while, like around that time of the month, we just get a little extra rowdy. So what's your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure? Yeah. I don't know. I I grow weed. That's my thing. I, (laughs) I, I, that's my, that's my thing that I like to go and look at. (laughs) I don't think that's, I don't know if that's a guilty pleasure anymore, but yeah. That Is one. it a good, I don't, I mean, I don't know. It's it's a bad one, I guess. I don't know. I play guitar. I like to listen to music. I'm just a relaxed guy. I'm pretty chill. I really don't get riled up about anything, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. So on that note. Sorry, I'm boring. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to answer the question, really. No, there's nothing wrong with it. At least, like, you popped on and we lost Joe. Like, I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't popped on. We would have lost the whole end of the interview, so. It's been over. Right? You would just be like, oh. And I just, and I just ended it terribly with a terrible answer. Because, <laughs> because
because I, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Stop beating yourself up. Come on. Like, <laughs> I'm just messing around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Luke. Um, so since that was our final question, mm-hmm. I'm going to have you leave us with all of the social avenues that everybody should end up checking out for Primal Moon. Um, the floor is yours. Go ahead and plug everything that you want us to know about. Uh, you should check us out on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube. You can check us out on any streaming services, Facebook at Primal Moon, and then uh, Instagram, Primal Moon Band. Uh, we're on Twitter, too. And uh, that's about it. Really, you can check us out on our website, Primal Moon Band. Uh, check out the store, too. Got we got uh, merch. We got, uh, yeah, we got merch on there. We got stickers, shirts. And uh, soon we'll be having CDs, too, of the EP. So um, are there any live avenues coming up for people to go out and get tickets to see you guys live at any point soon? Uh, at the moment, I think we have one in December, but it's not really for sure yet. But at the moment, no, not really. All right. Well, Unfortunately, no. But we, we do have some stuff lined up in soon. January. Yeah, hopefully, like, maybe within the new year, we wrangle in something soon. So, like, if you guys end up doing that, um, I could maybe do, like, some videos or some photography for it and, like, report back on that, too. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, we'll anyway, I wanted to... Then. What's up, Luke? I didn't hear that last I'll have time. to get in touch with you, then, when, uh, w- when we have a show. That'd be great. I'd be up for it. So, awesome. uh, I have to thank you for joining um go thank ahead. you for having me yeah no problem thank joe for me too um sucks that he uh didn't charge his phone before the it, it, it's, the thing it's, a, it's a typical thing every single time <laughs> see joe he's like hey my phone's about to die <laughs> on that note i wanted to thank you so much thanks luke thanks joe with primal moon um chicago um love local bands and i can't wait to see you guys live um, I am Roxavia Rose with Rock News UK, and thank you as always for joining us. Bye, guys. Take care. What can you tell us um, about your baddest full moon behavior and or habit? <laughs> I've, I used to have pretty bad full moon behavior. I was a big drugaholic and uh you know back in high school and, but then i started to sit back in life after i uh kind of left that phase of my life in the past and uh i ended up uh go i ended up, now i end up going and smoking a bowl and sitting out and people watching uh because you could see people act different completely <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty chill, actually. That I wouldn't consider that necessarily bad full moon behavior. <laughs> no, it used to be. It used to be bad. I used to do a lot of crazy stuff on a full moon, <laughs> but that was that's a, a long time ago. So I gotta thank you for jumping back on with us. Um, Rock News really appreciates you. Uh, for those who who don't know, um, <laughs> we lost you the last time we spoke because your phone died. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> we just had one last question to go. Um, so we just wanted to make sure uh, that we touch base again before um, we put everything together. Um, Rock News and myself, Rock TV Rose, looks forward to seeing you guys live again. I feel that you should be way bigger than you are. And hopefully all that comes true within the next year. Maybe one day. Yeah. All right. I, I see this being a good year. Thanks for talking. You, you're an awesome interviewer. You rock. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then I just wanted to let you know, um, if you wanted to leave your international audience with anything before you head out, um, the floor is yours. Um, be good to people and listen to Primal Moon. Uh, we're at, at Primal Moon Band at Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. 
we're on that Twitter stuff, but we don't really know how to utilize it. So, <laughs> you know, it's whatever. But yeah, we're and we're on the Spotify and all the other little streaming site things. Perfect. And again, right. I got to thank you for your time. Um, hopefully we'll be in touch soon. And thanks again for jumping back on with us. This has been Rock Tavia Rose with Rock News UK. And I had the pleasure of speaking with Primal Moon today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>